Hello and welcome back to your own channel Indian Defense Analysis where we bring to you all the latest development happening in the defense sector. During Milan 24, the Defense Minister Sujad Nath Singh inaugurated the Maritime Technology Exposition MTEX 24 in which more than 65 companies have showcased the cutting-edge naval technologies. The two important technologies that caught our attention is MPAUV that is Man Portable Autonomous Underwater Vehicle by BDL and NSTL and Electromagnetic Launcher System or EMAILS by BEL. However, this is not the first time when the EMAILS system has broken the cover. In June 2022, the Indian Navy's Vice Chief Vice Admiral SN Gormade visited BEL facility in Bengaluru to review the project progress on niche technologies. We can also see him briefed about a model of electromagnetic catapult launch system which was showcased to him. So now there are at least two occasions where we have seen emails under development for Indian Navy by BEL. This means that Indian Navy in its futuristic roadmap has planned an aircraft carrier that could be integrated with emails system. Indian Navy currently operates two aircraft carriers, which are INS Vikramadit and INS Vikrant. Navy has planned to build third aircraft carrier or IAC-2, which will be similar to INS Vikrant with some more enhancements. The new aircraft carrier proposed for acquisition will cost around 40,000 crore rupees and will be a 44,000 ton class aircraft carrier. Initially, the Indian Navy wanted a 65,000 ton class of aircraft carrier with a nuclear propulsion. But now it has operated for Vikrant class of aircraft carrier as a later will take longer time to design, develop and construct. However, Navy has begun the study of aircraft carrier of higher tonnage and shipbuilding facilities are also being upgraded for the same. This will be an entirely new design. Initially, it was planned to include nuclear propulsion system into it, but this was later changed to an integrated electric propulsion system due to complexities involved in developing a nuclear reactor with a capacity of 500 to 550 megawatts. The most important feature of this futuristic aircraft carrier is going to be a cattle bar system for the operation of fighter jets from its deck. Now there are many ways to power the catapult system of aircraft carrier such as air pressure, hydraulic and steam power. The steam power catapults have many limitations. They are bigger in size and require large manpower to operate and maintain. Steam catapult launch also has an adverse effect on the life of the aircraft. The amount of steam required to power catapult depends upon the weight of aircraft. However, once the launch starts, there is no control on the quantity of steam generated. The excess steam can rip off the nose wheel landing gear attached to the catapult and less steam will not provide the adequate power to take off. This is the reason why General Atomics has developed EMAS, that is Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System for US Navy. EMAS uses electromagnetic technology to launch aircraft from the deck of naval aircraft carriers and offers increased launch operational ability, fit for different size of aircraft, easy to maintain, lighter and reduce life cycle cost. It consists of a linear motor drive instead of a steam piston to propel the aircraft off the deck. During the Navy Leaks Sea Airspace 2017 exposition, General Atomics has showcased its electromagnetic aircraft launch system and advanced arresting gear for aircraft carriers. The AAG or Advanced Arresting Gear is a turboelectric system designed for controlled and level deacceleration of aircraft during the landing phase. Indian Navy may also look for collaboration with General Atomics to develop emails for its futuristic aircraft carrier. This was today's update. Please let us know your views on this in comment section. If you like the video, do not forget to like, share and subscribe. With this, I would like to say goodbye and Jai Hind. We'll be soon back with more interesting and amazing development happening in the defense sector.